so what is the difference between a vegetative life form and a dormant life form so here we will see the, the vegetative growth of bacteria so whenever the bacterial cells are present in the favorable environment whenever the surrounding is full with nourishment whenever the adequate nourishment or moisture is present the cells they perform active splitting or there is a binary fission take place so after a generation time the cell divides and we get the two cells two daughter cells after the second generation time we get the four cells so like this the cells each and every cell which is present in the favorable environment it constantly grows this life form which constantly grows or multiplies is called as vegetative life form vegetative growth now what will happen if the cells are subjected to unfavorable or adverse environment if the conditions are not suitable for bacterial growth if the cells are subjected to starvation then the cells they will produce egg like dormant structure within the cell and that egg like structure will retain the potency of the cells so this structure which is grown within the cell is called as endospore and by the process of sporulation some genera some genera that is the cells which belong to bacillus genus or the cells which belong to clostridium genus bacilli are uh, aerobic spore formers and clostridia are anaerobic spore former they produce the egg like structure within the cell which is one per cell it is called as spore and uh, when the conditions are not suitable because of the extreme or harsh environment the cell or the germ cell which contains the spore it dies and the spores comes out of the cell which is called as exospore and now this exospore is capable of uh, acquiring the suitable uh, growth medium or it it at acquires the nourishment from the surrounding and again it germinates back and we get the germ cell back or vegetative cells back from the spores and that process is called as germination so bacterial spores they are meant for survival they are not meant for the reproduction the bacterial vegetative growth it happens when the cells are subjected to favorable environment full of nourishment full of uh, moisture these are some of the types of spores so here we can see the central spores these are sub terminal and these are terminal spores based upon the shape so this is the oval spore this is spherical spore this is oval and sub terminal and the thickness if it is thicker than the mother bacillus the cells are called as bulgy here you can see this, this these spores they have the thickness more than that of the mother bacillus that is why they are called as bulging spores and sometimes the cells there is spores they are naked they are called as conidial spores or sometimes they are enveloped that is they are present within the sac which is called as sporangial spore or the spores are called as sporangial spores this is the process of uh, sporulation which is shown so from the peripheral mesosome mesosome is what inner fold of the plasma membrane is called as mesosome so not from the central mesosome but from the peripheral mesosome the invagination of the plasma membrane start at the end of invagination there is a formation of septum and we get the unequal distribution of the cytoplasm as well as the dna the newly produced copy of the dna it remains within the the cell which is smaller the larger cell then engulfs that smaller cell the larger cell is called as the sporangio spore and the smaller cell is called as spore so the larger cell it engulfs that uh, small spore or four spore forming the two layers surrounding that spore and uh, within these two layers the peptidoglycan layer is uh, produced or the spore cortex is produced and thereafter due to the harsh environment or due to the not suitable condition the germ cells or the cells carrying the spores get get destroyed but the spores they retain the potency even for centuries so whenever the favorable conditions are brought back the spores they undergo germination 
so this is the germination process which is shown germination is what from the dormant egg like structure when we get the germ cells or uh, vegetative cells back this process is called the germination so basically for germination uh, there is uh, activation is required activation is mainly stimulated by some external stimuli like heat low ph or abrasion then comes the in a, uh, initiation initiation step so if certain ingredients if they are present in the surrounding ingredients like l alanine or d glucose or adenosine these ingredients they will uh, act as a effector substance and they will cause a release of autolytic enzymes and these autolytic enzymes will break open the spore cortex and uh, spore coat and that will lead to the hydration of the pore and that will increase the water content or moisture of the pore and then uh, the outgrowth or pore ex expansion occurs. The outgrowth is what? So here the spore coat breaks and from this uh, we get a single germ cell back or vegetative cell back. So the steps which are shown here uh, in the stage 1 after the release of the autolytic enzyme there is a cation release, there is a release of calcium and dipyrolonic acid, there is partial core hydration and some loss of the aromancy take place. In stage 2 there is a sufficient hydrolysis of spore vertex, there is further core hydration and the core expansion occurs. In the third and last stage, outgrowth occurs. So here, the small acid soluble proteins they are degraded. SASP is small acid soluble proteins, a pool of small acid soluble proteins, which protects the DNA of the bacteria which is present in the germ cell. And this pool it protects the DNA even from the radiation damage. Okay, that is why the spores are highly resistant. The two reasons are there that is calcium dipocolonic acid, the high amount of calcium dipocolonic acid which is present in the um, spore spore is responsible for resistance or uh, refractile nature. Uh, these are the modes of reproduction in bacterial cells. So bacteria mainly multiply by these possible mechanisms, binary fission, budding, fragmentation and formation of spores. So this is binary fission which is shown. From the central mesosome there is a invagination of the membrane. In the stage 1 there is a formation of uh, uh, DNA filament. A long exile filament of the DNA is formed. After the invagination we get the equal distribution of the DNA and equal distribution of cytoplasm. And thus we get the two equal daughter cells. Uh, which are similar in size to that of the mother cell. This is budding. In case of budding, the cells they develop the external protuberance or external tubercle. Uh, the newly produced copy of the DNA along with some portion of the cytoplasm enters the blood and that bud slowly enlarges and grows into a new microorganism. Sometimes it remains attached to the original mother cell and forms a pseudo hyphae. Sometimes it gets uh, detached and it exists as a new microorganism. This is budding. The cells like Rhodopseudomonas acidophilus, they are capable of doing the uh, budding. Fragmentation, the name itself indicates. So the cells, they form the long filaments of cells, either the cochoid filaments or the basilar filament. And these filaments they break at multiple uh, breaking points, forming separate segments. And each segment it grows into a new microorganism. So like this fragmentation, it helps in multiplication of cells. And this is the last mode of reproduction which is visible in case of some actinobacteria or actinomycetes like streptomyces species. The cells they produce the thousand or a million spores within the same organism. These spores they are present as a chain on the conidiophores, and these conidia they are responsible for um, uh, reproduction. So the spores, each spore is a asexual spore and capable of germination. 
whenever these pores land on some moist surface they germinate and after the germination we get the same microorganism or fungus back so these are the uh, modes of reproduction which are mainly utilized by the cells formation of conidious pores it is a asexual mechanism by which the million trillion organisms are produced at a time fragmentation budding and binary fission these are some of the other important 